Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is March 20th, uh, 2013. And um, I, I was thinking that we have a kind of um, welcome dogs and, and others. Uh, don't worry, it's cool. We love dogs. Anyway, we have kind of a packed schedule over the next four weeks. Um, but this week we, we are able to kind of just uh, check in with each other and say hello and um, see what's up this spring. So I, I kind of uh, titled this show uh, Spring Meet and Greet. Um, and uh, Monica, welcome. Okay. And Monica, I, I don't, you may have changed some of the formulation here, but I thought tonight's show I was just introducing was, um, which is just to get to know each other and connect somehow. But here's what I've thought to do. Um, Monica has inspired us with some notion of detox, and and I want to kind of ask us to think about these four things as we introduce ourselves, or one of them uh, as we go here. Um, and um, I should let you say this, Monica, but please correct me as, as I stop babbling here in a second. But we want to ask you to talk about things you've been noticing, things you've been dreaming of, things you've been connecting to, and things you're doing that are awesome. Um, or, yeah, let's, let's say that. And, and really it's about just getting to know each other a little bit better. Most of us here are, um, a couple of us are brand new to Youth Voices, and some of us are kind of figuring it out. Others of us aren't. Um, and um, so, yeah, let's throw that out there. And Joel is here because he was hanging out with me in um, DML, and, um, and Joe was as well. And so, you know what? Why don't we start there and see how it goes. Monica, do you have anything to add to that? No, sounds great, Paul. Okay. So um, let's start with the furthest away person, Lauren. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself briefly, if you don't mind. And are you back in school yet? Go ahead. No, no, because it, it's been strike after a strike after a strike each week. Wow. Yes. So introduce yourself. Where are those well, strikes happening? Hello. Yes, hello everyone. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I live in a small town called Vandil, and I work in a, um, in a poor school teaching English as a foreign language. Well, that's it. You said a poor school? Yes, it is a poor school. Deprived. Mm. Poor school, deprived. Yes. Mm. No, no so, computers and things like those, for example. Great. It's great that you're joining us again. And Lauren inspired us to set up a channel on Youth Voices called uh, Spanish. And uh, my students have messed around with it a little bit. Ooh. And so we're, we're hoping as your students come back to school that uh, we can keep messing around. Both uh, Maybe your students speak English on there and our students speak Spanish and whatever. We can kind of mess around with it. Okay. What have you been yes, noticing? My, my, some of my students posted something, but it was, uh, as I explained in, the, in that meeting that, that we had, uh, it's even very difficult for me to try to get them write something in Spanish. So I had, just for them to write those very, very short logs, it was a, a very tiring and, but they were very happy with the, the results. It was really, really nice. It made a change in their lives. And so I was very proud and very happy. And I'm really hoping to get back to that school because it's like every week there's there's been a, a strike for two days, either Mondays or Tuesdays or Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I go to that particular school on Tuesdays. Oh. So I haven't had any classes since the beginning of classes, like a month ago. Mm. That's the situation now. Mm. And yeah. the thing is, like, we are forced to strike because there's no one going to, to, the, to the schools. Um, so even if, even, uh, if I don't want to go on a strike, I, I, I have no option. Yeah. So. What are people striking about? Is it simple to say or...? Salary. Salary. That's simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Because the, the, the inflation rate here in Argentina is woof. 
mm. really, really, really high. So it's a huge problem today. So let's keep whipping around, and maybe we can focus in on the noticing. What are you noticing right now? Um, and um, Joe, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm picking kind of arbitrarily here, but just to keep oh, the, okay. it flowing. Great. Welcome. And so what am I noticing about? Introduce yourself first. But <laughs> oh, intru oh, gosh. Uh, Joe Barayi. So I teach um, at Fremont High in Oakland. Uh, I've been there for about 10 years. And I've been doing blogging with my kids for about five years, but uh, the awesome Paul was introduced to me by another Paul, and so I've been on Youth Voices now with my juniors. And uh, let's see, next year I'm going to move completely into Youth Voices because uh, I'm looping with these kids. So I'm really psyched about where, wow, where they're going to go if they, when they've been on it for you know a couple of years. So this will be cool. I'm excited. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> Great for you to join. Great for you to join us. Um, and, and the noticing, we're purposely leaving it way open. Just what are oh, you noticing? God. What am I noticing? <laughs> um, in terms of they're using the site or, God, you're leaving it way open? Okay. Um, Go for it. I'm noticing that my students are uh, way, I've got about 75% of them that are really engaged and 25% of them that are really anxious still. And really scared to put voice out there, uh, and how to. I'm grappling with getting the 75% to kind of push on those kids that I still have not jumped on board um, for all their different reasons. And right now, they're. I'm 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 juiced for where we're going with it because we're gonna we want to start publishing videos and 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 some mm -hmm. of their photo essays mm -hmm. online and to get some feedback on that from the other kids uh, that are on the site. Um, so that'll be like a, a true test, and we're trying to do all of this stuff in like within the next four weeks. So we'll see before testing happens. Very cool. Exciting to work with you. Welcome. Yeah, you know. And I'm just uh, Jeremy. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, thanks. So introduce yourself, and <laughs> what have you been noticing recently? Um, my name is uh, Jeremy Heiler. I teach in Michigan, um, a very rural school district. I teach 7th and 8th grade language arts, um, a total of about 120 students, um, a predominantly uh, very rural uh, farm community, um, you know, so there's not a whole lot going on in their world besides um, the cornfields that lay around the school. Um, <laughs> uh, some of the things that um, that I've been noticing, um, especially with um, my students publishing their writing online, um, was this fear of um, other people looking at their writing. Uh, mm -hmm. For so many years, they've been in this bubble or this small group of students of their classmates that have looked at their writing for you know, as they've gone through their grade, the grade levels, and then all of a sudden it was, Mr. Heiler is going to have you put your writing out there into the real world and have people look at it. And not necessarily make judgments, but to give you feedback. And it has, it has scared them. It has really scared them. Hmm. Interesting. So you and Joe have noticed something similar, or at least one of the things. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, who wants to jump in? Jim, go ahead. Jim. Um, okay, I'm Jim Nordlinger. From uh, I teach at the Bronx High School for the Visual Arts. Um, I've been there for six years and taught for much longer than that. Um, I'm teaching ninth and tenth grade this year with lots of lots of students on Youth Voices. Um, uh, I'm learning it more and more. I don't. Uh, let's. See. What I've noticed is uh, let's the students who who uh, it, it's very progressive in terms of students getting involved um, with it. The students who have been most in, involved seem to get more and more readily involved and do research better. I don't even hardly have to say anything. And the students who are slower to get involved also slowly step into the process. And uh, I've also noticed the more that I can get computers into the room, the better it goes. Uh, and uh, I, I guess also then it becomes, I've also noticed that it becomes very much like regular pedagogy. I have to figure out how to what, how to get it, to move it forward without getting in the way and things like that. It, um, I'm not sure of the percentages, but I've, uh, I'm a slow progress, and yet it um, seems very, uh, I'm enormously, uh, it seems like it has endless possibility, and 
I, 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 the students and I are both progressing at the same rate, I feel like. <laughs> cool. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Monica, what have you been noticing? Introduce yourself if you might, don't mind. I'm Monica in Colorado. Um, I've been noticing just like real blatantly how um, much the things that we assume to be ridiculous are the things that are the least ridiculous and vice versa. Um, and also how many people there are that hold that to be true. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thanks. And I'm going to jump in, and then have you noticed I'm just jumping all over? I'm trying to do that on purpose. And and, and then after we introduce, we'll um, say, we'll, we'll let it uh, kind of flow. Um, but um, I've been working with uh, uh, Rocking the Boat and, and um, outside. I, I spent all day outside today. And I've been noticing how much kids love being out of the building. Young people love being out of the building and, and out in nature. So let me just put it that way. Um, and Fred, do you want to try to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Um, so this is a, an interesting dip back into a school world that I've been um, largely uh, separated from for a few weeks because we had a fire in our home and we've been dealing with that, moving out and so on. But I do have several projects that I continue to keep involved with. Um, one launches actually this Saturday, um, the continuation of the uh, art and education project collaborating through the maker. Uh, originally it was our maker grant and then it evolved into the third space work with uh, the St. Louis retreat last summer and um, so we're doing a collaboration with a whole group of teachers in classrooms all over the county. What They're county, teach, Fred? Introduce uh, yourself. Set in, oh, uh, this is in Santa Cruz County, and I'm, I'm based in Watsonville. Um, when I was in the classroom, I was in a bilingual two-way immersion uh, school, and I, I love that, that I, I love to chat more about Spanish and, and bilingualism and I've been having a lot of thoughts about that. Um, but the, the uh, Art and Education Project is a collaboration with our local cultural council um, and uh, some of their after-school art programs. And then those teachers in the regular classroom, mostly in alternative school settings, who uh, have the have, uh, the freedom to take on this kind of project. There isn't much room in most classrooms for what we're proposing, which is a several week collaboration with outside artists coming into the classroom and working with the kids on an environmental theme mural. And then we want to bring them all together, um, bring all the murals together for a, an event uh, at the end of the school year. Cool. So that's starting this week, you said? We on this this week is when these four foot by eight foot panels get distributed to the teachers. And next week we start visiting classrooms and uh, seeing how this will develop. It's a it's a kind of a wild uh, project. And let's try to check in. Time. Yeah, yeah, we can I, check in on I that. Just in wanna, a few weeks. I just wanna Yeah, right. Gail, can you say hello or not? Yeah, Gail. Not yet. We can't mm -hmm. hear you yet. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, and I just whip. I think we're we we're introduced to each other so far. And Gail, we'll just have to chat somewhere. <laughs> uh, there is a chat going on at edtechtalk.com/ttt um, if you want to join us there um, to chat as well. So the, lots of topics came up there. And Joel, I didn't forget. I want to kind of. Throw it to you. Have you introduce yourself and tell us uh, about the DML conference, and if you can start us there, and then we'll we'll move back into other things. I can I can totally start us there. So um, yeah, my name is Joel Malley, and I teach at Chitawaga Central High School. I'm an ELA teacher. I teach ninth graders and twelfth graders. Um, 
my 12th grade classes are two electives, uh, AP Lit, and then a digital writing workshop. Um, transitioning. Oh, this past weekend I got to go to DML for the first time. This what did you notice there? There you go. <laughs> yeah, totally. Lots of stuff. And um, in in Chicago, it was the first time at this conference, and um, I noticed a lot of like bigger themes emerging. Um, I went there as part of being involved in this connected learning inquiry group for the National Writing Product Project. So I was kind of focusing my attention there, but I kept noticing this thing that everybody was talking about. Um, this idea of badges um, about uh, outside organizations and schools um, issuing badges when skills have, I'm sorry, when teach students have kind of demonstrated proficiency at mastering a certain skill. So it's a way for like students but also um, you know regular people in the real world to kind of identify their accomplishments um, I, I guess I guess like the the the, tri the the whatever the way it goes is Mozilla, this open internet place, um, has got this badging system, and if you want to be a badge issuer, you contact them, you tell them what kind of criteria goes into your badge, um, they issue badge issuing permits or something and then uh, the kids end up putting up artifacts to kind of demonstrate this is you know this is what I did to get this skill this is a skill that I that I've mastered so that was kind of cool um, the rest of this this conference was really awesome and it was about um, kind of opportunities for teachers to share stories about their kids um, being activists and uh, getting in, engaged in, in our democracy um, and I thought it was really interesting to hear all the different stories of what teachers were doing across the country and in you know even in other countries um, in a different way their kids were getting involved using digital medias making movies uh, capturing stories telling stories a lot of really interesting stuff going on over there it was a really rewarding conference mm -hmm. one of the one of the coolest um, projects and I, I need to look into it more the badging projects that I saw that I didn't know about before was the veterans one um, I don't know if you saw that one, but veterans, when they come back, go through lots of bureaucratic wait time, and and so the, the, there's a badging system where they can identify the skills they they learned while in the military, and then use that to kind of um, help them find jobs and so forth. So like the the. <sighs> The connection between actual skills and the power that that gives somebody was really obvious in that project. Um, so that was kind of interesting to me. Joe, you were there I, too. Go ahead. I just want to throw one more thing. Like the, yeah. the, when you were talking about that, it kind of made me think of, you know, the massive amount of people that are starting to, you know, start. Uh, MOOCs, those massively open online courses, but then drop them too, right? Because they really have no incentive to finish them, or they can't keep up with the pace, or so on and so forth. Um, but there's all these learning opportunities outside of regular institutions where, you know, I think that um, as a big believer in self-betterment, that a big believer in kind of moving yourself forward in the world and gaining certain skills and continuing to grow, I think badges would be an excellent way to kind of uh, help people identify the skills that they that they that they gain in these other other things that they're doing, and I think that might make that play the Corsairs of the world make a lot more sense. So let me back off and allow you guys to jump in more often here. Any thoughts? Anybody want to take this conversation? Um, I guess when I was at the conference, I, one of the takeaways from it was the like yeah all the awesome work that people are doing and the 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 courage and then i was like super juiced cuz in, in i knew then that it really was we have the resources you know working we you know as much as we can we have a working lab uh it's a 50 50 chance uh but it really was what i got from it was we can i can go as far as i want to um as long as i just kind of jump in where i'm where i'm kind of trying to figure it out is how to share some of the work with the teachers just on site and in Oakland um, because it is it feels like we're just one teacher in every school that's trying to do something and then how, how to network so um, the whole idea of badges I can complete we're, we're an academy and so we deal we're in the architecture academy and architecture and design and I could totally see how the 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 badges could work with our or how it could revitalize some of the work we're doing in the academy and then I talked to someone from I don't even remember um, from Google about 
how Guru could be used to provide a, a legacy component for like our senior research projects. So I don't know. I just learned a lot of a lot of cool mediums by which a lot of the, the work that the kids are doing can be how it could be published beyond just the blogging. And so I don't know. I wish there were maybe more months in the school year at this point so I can try some stuff out before they leave. But uh, I am psyched for next year. Yeah, that conference was awesome. <laughs> So the the Guru Legacy. So if a student does an inquiry project, mm -hmm. um, and they collect resources, so the Legacy idea is that those resources then would be kind of available to other students to use. Is yeah, that... because because that the senior projects are have a social equity uh, and revolution type of focus. <laughs> many of the students will have the same ideas as the ones that came before them. So. If we're talking about police brutality in Oakland, I, I'm pretty certain next year someone else is going to have that same topic, not because they're trying to bite someone else's idea, but because it truly is an issue in Oakland. And to be able to then see what work has come before and then we're using it to kind of add. Um, ideas were flying left and right yesterday at our senior capstone meeting about um, how we could potentially use Guru as a means by which we, we, we keep the work and, and then we actually, you know, create stuff that everyone else in the country could potentially use. I don't know. We were we're still we're still in the early stages of everything. So um, We all right. are. I know. <laughs> it's, I know. It's cool. Well, yeah. I, and and I know I was throwing it open to everyone, I really am, but I, it's some of some of the practical issues. Um, I, this collections that my students have been building over the last uh, couple of months, I've kind of figured out how to make a link to them um, and make them available pretty easily at um, youthvoices.net slash guru. Um, and if and anybody who's an editor on the site can add their collections there too. So that's a, a way for us to kind of share would be interesting in all that too. It's always sort of what I'm hoping for. But yeah. Joe, do you want to keep talking and, and Jeremy um, maybe about about the um, about the going public issue? <clears throat> well, it was it's just interesting. Um, we opened up our you know my class opened up with um, an idea um, to use youth voices as a way to introduce. Um, it was it was uh, originally proposed between me and another teacher in the Lansing School District to um, kind of use Youth Voices as a way to introduce our students. And um, before we did that, um, we introduce, I guess, introduce our students with, with their writing, you know, introduce each other with their writing. And uh, we did a Google Hangout. And um, it was amazing. Be, one of the amazing things was that uh, doing this Google Hangout with this other classroom, um, and, and I'm not trying to take anything away from my kids, but they, th this group of kids that I'm working with particularly right now is my rowdy group of kids. I mean, they are um, the ones that are hanging from the chandeliers at times, and they're just, you know, it, it's difficult to get, I mean, it's constantly keeping them on task. This is seventh uh, grade, right? Yeah, this is seventh grade. This, you know, time, okay. time on task is for them is, you know, if I can get a good 20 minutes out of them, I'm doing well on, on a 50-minute um, uh, time frame. Um, but um, it was amazing when that camera got flipped on and the conversation between two classrooms was taking place to start how reserved they were. Um, and just all of a sudden, I don't want to talk anymore because now I'm being exposed. And, and I think there was two factors there. Number one, I think it was because they were new. It was new people, a new teacher. Uh, and, no, and number two, I think that it was it was the cultural diversity of this school. You know, I'm dealing with I'm dealing with students. There's 120 students, and 98 percent of the population is is a white population. And then I'm going to a divert. Then I'm uh, we're Google doing a Google Hangout, and we're we're collaborating with another school that um, has. Um, Anywhere from you know, there, there's Arab, there's black, there's white, there's Hispanic, you know, in this diversity. And it was one of the things that my kids first noticed when we were looking at each other's school web pages. And in the idea behind that, and I, you know, talking about, I guess, you know, the bigger issue of publishing things and putting things out there, it was, 
you know, I had to I had to talk them through this and say, listen, you know, when you're out into the real world, you are going to be dealing with diversity. There, you, your little bubble of these people that you are with every day is that is not the, that is not a real snapshot of what the world is like, and you need to understand that. You know, and it's the same thing with their writing. You know, and I, I try to re relate that to their writing. I'm like, this snapshot of you getting this feedback from your classmates of, oh, you're a great writer and you're doing a great job, and and you getting this this very minor feedback from the, this group of this very small group of people. I said, that's not the case anymore. Now you're putting your writing out there into the real world for people to see, and you're going to get a more diverse feedback from from these individuals not just because of their cultural background but because they're different writers they're at different levels and they see things diff from different perspectives and so it, you know that's been a it's been a real it's been a challenge but it's been a really rewarding challenge to see my kids grow in just the few weeks that we've been doing this mm -hmm. and and mine on the flip side is my out of my 100 kids I have one white child and when we were following the guides Paul uh, and everyone when we were following the guides for how to respond to mm -hmm. other students posts or their discussion posts what was interesting was one of the comments that came up from one of my kiddos was so miss you want us to talk white <laughs> and I was, I was like whoa no <laughs> um, and the distinguishing between you know when you put your public face out there you know, you want to talk in a way that people will be will want to listen to you and understand you. So if you want to talk a certain way, you're going to get a certain group to, to listen to you. So I thought that was pretty pretty interesting because their perception of what the public is, um, they they are comfortable with people in the school seeing their work. Um, I I do a lot of like publishing of my own for them. Um, so, but it was when they started to think that the comments that they, they got nervous about commenting on other students. They thought that they were going to get responded to um, and be corrected themselves for the way that they were talking. So a lot more of them did gravitate towards the, the guides online simply because it was safe and they got it and they understood it. Uh, but, if, but before I even introduced the guides, a few of them did get on there. And I'm not saying they, they posted inappropriate comments, but it was way more so their truer voice. Um, and so we're trying to find that happy balance right now between, you know, guided writing and, and all of the starters and how to break away from it and kind, kind of find their flow, kind of like Perry Thomas, the we're studying dot down these mean streets and like, you know, how do you get people to listen to you, but how do you maintain the voice part? Uh, so I think once they get comfortable constantly posting and, and responding to each other, they're going to start to see, I don't know, I'm crossing my fingers at this point, so... Mm -hmm. Other thoughts about this? Lauren, well, oh, go ahead. I, I wanted to invite Lauren in on that conversation. How You said it was difficult for your students to post, but it wasn't, was it the technology that was difficult, or I mean, how, was, how was it for them coming to voice? Yeah. I always like listening to all of you because I think you do an amazing job here. Things are completely different, especially in the school I'm working, that particular school I'm working. Others are much, much better than that one in particular. But um, it's difficult for them to write in Spanish. Mm. Yes, mm. so uh, even though I, I teach in English too, I, I for example, one one day I spent with one of the girls who uh, posted the blog, I spent like three hours for her to write three sentences. Yes, mm -hmm. and she, she was like the girl sitting in the corner that everybody despised. Yes, so it was very, very difficult. It was a real, real struggle for her to write something. And uh, the following day, I think you you highlighted. Uh, how, how do you say that? You at uh, the, uh, the home page. Yeah, we put her up on the front page. Uh -huh. Like featured or something like that. Yes, featured. It was like a featured blog. So that next week, I congratulated her in front of everybody, and uh, and she completely changed her attitude in the class. <laughs> she started uh, talking more to the like say the best group of girls, you know, the popular ones in, in the group. So, so that was like uh, a huge change. 
Yes, it was very nice. Yeah. That's all That's I have to say. But yeah, yes, uh, but we don't have the technology. So what I did is some of them have Facebook. So I added them on my Facebook account, and so we worked on the on the internet with some of them and. Uh, Yes, that's what I what I did because oh. we we don't have uh, we we have internet connection but we don't have computers at the school. So how do they how do they work on Facebook? Through their some mobile them, devices or yeah. No 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 no. Some of them have uh, internet and um, and computers at home, so they they gather together. Yes, they they cool. at the house of this particular girl to to be able to connect. Because they they are neighbors, so that's what we did. Circling back for a second to some of the principles around connected learning, um, working on an openly networked system is is one of the principles around connected learning, and and at the DML conference, just checking around, looking at other systems and so forth, uh, you know, Youth Voices is is taking a a kind of um, a risk or something out there to be public like that, but I think I mean, because our stuff is is really open. I just and I believe in that, but but it also takes some time, some coaching, some nurturing to to be comfortable there. So. Go ahead, Fred. You yeah, wanted to say something earlier, maybe. Well, I, as far as that goes, well, I still. Have not succeeded in getting youth voices unblocked. It is blocked in in the Power of School District where I really? work mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I had one teacher I was working with who kept saying that she would talk to the principal. That's really all it would take. But since I'm not working directly with students, I'm not really even in a position to do much about it. But it's it's been very frustrating. Um, mm. Interesting. Yeah. Jim, how about your students on the public issue? Does that come up, or? Yeah, it. it um, I was just thinking about it. I, I find that um, certain students absolutely love it being public, public and getting the comments. And um, someone mentioned when they're featured, they're thrilled. And when they get comments, especially from outside New York State, they they feel enormously happy. And other students. Um, Fight the. I can't. It's really hard in my school to tell the difference between they. They don't make anything public, meaning even putting it on paper sometimes. So it's hard <laughs> for me to tell the difference between. They don't want any of their thoughts being, you know, understood by anybody else on the planet sometimes. But uh, I, um, but I do. There is an issue. Some of the students really are reluctant to. I think, just from uh, you know, grammatical errors or they don't feel in control of. Of how they, you know, uh, are coming off in a sense, even without even getting into the idea of, what, of their ideas being public. So, and I have a um, wrestle with how to make it more comfortable to um, just get stuff on there and then fix it up. And you know, the idea that writing's a process and all of the, you know, you learn more. It's very hard, and I cannot separate it from just regular. It's hard to separate it from just regular pedagogy. You know, how do you get someone to be comfortable? To, to you know uh, to show their their work I, I, so I, I have not solved the problem at all uh, I find that you know the strongest students are very excited to publish and are thrilled when they are seen and other students feel reluctant for like a myriad of reasons it mm -hmm. seems very individual so mm -hmm. and it's a, it's an ongoing I find the more that I that it gets out there, and the more little steps that are taken, that's why I find that it's very, you know, slow. And the longer I, you know, the more frequently I can get at it, it feels like more students start to get on. You've seen they've, you know, uh, when I did the, I opened up the the letters to the next mayor, and mm -hmm. so, you know, many students started coming up with uh, different things they wanted to say, and uh, that I was I was surprised at that the the issues. And I, I don't know whether it was because we've been working on youth voices for a while, or whether it was really the issue, or that people were getting more comfortable. It was hard. I couldn't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure it out. Just a practical note: they, they are composing in in docs as well, or yes. Okay. We uh, I used 
docs a lot. You know, they prepare things, um, you know, and then uh, share with each other. I'm trying to get them to share with each other and then, you know, put things on there. I've had them write in pairs in on docs and, and, and other things like this. And the, uh, it, that helps to some degree. That, that becomes its own hurdle, you know, dealing with docs, you know, uh, getting them, what do I do, you know, what, and all this. And then to then get it onto Youth Voices, it become, but it does help, I think. It, it's sort of a, another step. Uh, very Jeremy. Hard, very uh, hard with the, the whole literacy issue, you know, like just becomes gigantic, I think, you know, like spelling and how to do, you know, it becomes a battle. Hmm. I, that's as far as I'm going. That's cool. Jeremy, I was wondering if that video is, did you record it? The video that you and the other No, the, yeah, the okay. one that Arm and I did, no, we didn't, and, and I wish I would have because I had Screencast-O-Matic loaded onto my computer and I probably could have very well used it um, to record that session. Uh, but, I, I definitely also, have... check, out, check out Google's <laughs> On Air, which is how we're recording right now. But, okay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. <clears throat> but, but yeah, you know, and that's one of the things. It would have been really nice to for the students to, to see themselves and how they were they were acting. Um, you know, so that way they could maybe change their behavior a little bit. Maybe they wouldn't have. I don't know. <laughs> what are the, uh, I think about the uh, the in terms. Of, I'm sorry, I can't remember the the name of the teacher from Buenos Aires. Uh, Lauren. I, I, Lauren. I, I yeah. also work with many reluctant writers and have over the years and, and uh, in the alternative schools many of the students have, have struggled with writing in, in either language a great deal and one of the advantages of the digital story format is it, it constrains the writing to a short form and makes it in some ways easier to, to get a completed assignment through. But one of the things I've noticed universally is on hearing their recorded voice back, students say, that's not me. That's not what I sound like. <laughs> it's, it's so hard for people to accept their own voice. And, and that's one of the great powers of the digital story format is that you have to actually voice your words. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's not the only issue with my students. It's like they haven't even been properly fed while they were little kids. So their cognitive yes. skills, yes, are very very low and that's something I really have to struggle with uh, and I teach English but I made them write in Spanish so for me it was not more about writing but about opening their minds and uh, for them to have a blog featured on a website from the USA was like whoa <laughs> yes it was a huge success Am I talking to somebody from another country? Really? So that was the thing, yes. But even to do that, so for me, it's like more like uh, uh, than developing the writing skills and all that. For me, it's more like opening their minds, opening up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a path of possibilities. Yes, I want them to think that they might uh, make something of this world. Yes, so for me, it's more like that. So far. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So let me um, ask us to shift a little bit to some of the other words um, around dream and connect, perhaps. Like, what are you dreaming of doing this spring, and what kind of connections are you thinking of making? Autumn, autumn here. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> this autumn, <laughs> there in spring here. Yes. Good. Thank you. Who wants to jump on either of those? You know what? Uh, I'll jump in a little bit. I um, I'm actually kind of excited. I've uh, 
my, my classroom over the years, I've had, you know, some computers, you know, I've had, um, you know, up to like maybe 15 computers in my class and always had, you know, 25 kids or something like that, which I know that I have, you know, am blessed with all that. Um, but next year I get to be a little bit more blessed. I, I'm part of a grant where I'm going to be able to have enough computers for every single one of my kids, enough laptops for every single one of my kids. So whereas before... I've been kind of really limited in, or a little bit limited in what I can do. Um, I'm next year. I'm going to be able to do whatever it is I can. I can imagine, right? So I'm going to be, um, you know, working in an online environment with a Moodle, and then I really am excited to get my kids, ninth grade, twelfth grade, um, into a more open environment where they could share some of their finished pieces and share some of their process stuff. Um, maybe on youth voices would be awesome so I'm really looking forward to it. and one of the other things that the conference um, really cemented home for me is just the ubiquity and utter usefulness of like cell phones and iPods it's like I know every say I mean I've always been hemming and hawing like how can I get a camera on every kid's hand this is gonna be so you know what am I gonna do but I mean every kid I have has a cell phone every kid I have you know, has an iPod Touch or something like that. So it's like these tools are available, and I think next year where I'll have the composing tools in class, uh, I'm really excited about what I'm going to be able to do. So it's one thing I'm connecting and dreaming. Mm. One one of the things that happened today was um, we're we're putting up these nest boxes in this wonderful place in the Bronx um, that looks out on the ocean, um, and um, the, we, they had the face toward the south southeast and there was an instructor kind of saying okay that's south and that's east and the kid was looking down at his phone he said no south is kind of that way and east is this way and you know he had his compass out and he was like showing us what the real south and east was which was kind of fun but anyway other other dreams or connections people are making well i i Go ahead. I've been dreaming about trying to create some events, public events that would be conducted in Spanish. I, I just, I love speaking Spanish. I actually did my first ever detox talking to myself in Spanish, and I haven't done anything yet with publishing it, but it was a wonderful feeling. And I would love to create a, 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 a forum, a, an event. It doesn't really matter what the topic is, but just to get a bunch of people to agree to go into some high-profile space like the museum in, in downtown Santa Cruz and have a high-level discussion in Spanish. And I, there's many people who are capable of that, but it does not happen in public. I, I went to a... An, ecological farming conference because there were supposed to be some bilingual events there and and it was the uh, it was the ghettoized you know you put on your headphones and you sit there and try to follow a simultaneous translation and oh it was just horrible it was a really demeaning and unpleasant experience so I, I really want to create a, a, a space to elevate the, the worth of Spanish in the public sphere. Hmm. So, Fred, do you want to do a TTT in Spanish? <laughs> oh, por supuesto! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dreaming small here a little bit. <laughs> Well, I, I, but I think I think it sounds like it gets back to what Lauren was saying, and I mean that was kind of inspiring that that it, it's not about Spanish or English; it's about opening people's minds, right? I think that's right. what you said. Right. Other thoughts? Um, uh, for me, it would be wonderful to have a hangout with my students. Uh, yes, and other students in any part of the world, that would be something. And, and some of your students do have access at home to computers? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, well, last year's students, because this year's students, I, I still haven't met them, 
Mm, okay. So I, <laughs> That's right, I, I don't forgot. know. <laughs> yes, I don't know. But, but you suspect last... they would, right? Yeah. Yes, I, I hope that some of them will. And my last year students, um, yes, that they do have internet connection, at least five, five of them. But I will keep seeing them because I, we kept contact during the summer break here. So, yes, it could, it could be really great. Mm -hmm. But it, it should be in Spanish. If some of you volunteer, <laughs> it should be in Spanish. But you're you're an e you're an English teacher, but you would want to do yes. the hang out in Spanish. Yes, but they, they 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 will not say a word in English. It's no no, it's very very difficult. Some mm. of them might, but they they won't understand a thing. No. Hello, what's your name? And that's it. <laughs> I'd Lauren, I'd love, I'd love to participate. My kids are 60%, 70% Spanish speaking, so I would love to do that. I would be happy to do that as well. Yeah. We're making some great. connections. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I could do that too. <laughs> that would be fantastic, really. One of the things, one of the, again, I'm dreaming small for a second here, um, but, but one of the things it seems to me is that getting our students comfortable in this space, meaning with the Hangout, is, is no small matter. Um, so I, I have this funny thing where kids talk to each other, you know, in the same room on a Hangout. Um, but, they, <laughs> but, they, but, they end up, but they end up saying things they probably wouldn't have said face to face and they, you know, they, they, and they end up being comfortable in this space and then, you know, they can, they can then kind of think about doing that from home with somebody from Buenos Aires, for example. So, yeah, that, that's interesting. And, and Jeremy, uh, your, your kids are kind of younger, but yeah, do they, do they, do they? Do you have a Google Apps account at your school, though? Yeah, we do. This this year is the first year that they've that we've uh, been able to have that, and um, we're just not we're just scratching the surface. Um, me, myself, and one other teacher are are scratching are, are you know digging into that a little bit more for next year because that stuff kind of came about halfway through the year um, with mobile lab carts and things like that available to our school. So now kids can have you know, laptops in front of them and all that. So uh, we'll have access to that. Um, I do find it interesting what you said about how kids can have conversations with each other across the room because I, I have kids that do Google chatting across the room from each other. And it's like, you know, you can turn around and talk to them, to the person. But I, I think it's, I think, I think that you bring up a very good point, though, Paul, because I think that their students, I mean, especially, and this is one of the big reasons that I am an advocate for online spaces, uh, something, you know, like Moodle or Edmodo or Schoology, where, you, you know, you can have, I think you can have discussions with your students more, um, with more in-depth conversations with your students, because those students that might be reluctant to raise their hand in class and speak among their peers might be more apt to say something in an online space rather than, saying it in front of class. Uh, and I've seen that. I, I, I mean, I think it's it's been proven. Yeah, you know, um, I, 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 maybe I'm shifting a little bit from that, but it reminds me to think that um, whenever I hear of, of somebody describing a blended learning experience, as soon as I can, I ask, how how has it changed your relationship with the students? And if they're not telling me that the relationship is deeper, is richer, is more personal, then it's not a blended experience that I want my kids to have. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. These tools can do that. Um, so, and, and too often they don't do that. <laughs> right. Um, but, yeah. So that's just a little political statement there. I don't know what to say. Other dreamers or connectors, if anybody wants to jump in. <laughs> I, Joe, I'd love for you to say a little more about the senior project and the civics, because you're trying to get out of the building too, right? Or somehow, or is that? Escape, am I yes. jumping you too far there? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, 
I guess my hope right now, our school is in, uh, because of the way it's being restructured, we're in dire need of community. And, uh, you know, the, the typical, I'm kind of like insular in my own classroom now at this point, And my very small goal is to share the work of my students uh, so that we start to build, so they can actually, people in the school itself can actually see what the students are doing. Like, I love that people across the country in Argentina could see my kids work, but I'm really going to try to focus on um, other teachers and other classrooms in the school actually being able to see what the kids are doing. I think that that's what my school needs is the the work sharing, teacher-teacher, uh, student-student, uh, etc. So that's that's what I'm, I want to do with Youth Voices. I feel like it's a great forum. Um, but with senior projects, it has been, uh, I do do a lot of uh, having virtual judges come in and uh, judge my students' research that they do over the course of eight months. So I, I guess I'm trying to figure out how to make it more streamlined because I, I think it's old school. What I do is I upload them to YouTube and I send the judge of a PowerPoint that the kids did or a resi that the kids did and then but I feel like there's so many more. I learned about so many other tools that, that they can use to be able to do that and share that type of work. Um, so I got to do a lot of research. But right now, I'm just trying to, I'm hopefully trying to get just my other teachers in my school on board with not being afraid uh, and actually seeing the potential of getting their own kids' work published. Um, and I already got one teacher. I think I converted them yesterday at the department meeting. <laughs> so, um, Paul, we might have more folks. Uh, That's cool. But yeah. uh, so, but it's it's a research project, the senior project, or yeah. does it go beyond that? It's I, a research project. It's field research that they have to do, and then they do an oral presentation in front of a panel of 10, 12 people, uh, which is a combination of folks, community folks, alumni, uh, younger mm -hmm. students, parents, uh, their teachers. I, I, it's a whole school event. Um, so what I'm tr I, I'd like the idea of the virtual judge, the judge that's not physically in the room. Uh, I've done it a few years now, uh, and every room that I, that I run an exhibition in, there's a virtual judge, which is the camera, and then I just send that out to the footage out to everybody that was interested in being a judge, mm -hmm. uh, but couldn't be there physically. Um, so that's, that's how I kind of get uh, as many folks outside of our school to be a part of this experience with the kids. Um, and the students are actually using their blogs to conduct their field research for their projects. So blogging with folks that actually matter uh, to their research um, has been, it's been cool. It's tough. Logistically, organizing all, it's tough. But uh, the kids really, they appreciate it and, uh, and they actually care more about the work and wanting to see it, wanting to see where they, what they do with it next year, even after they graduate. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Interesting. We have a few minutes left. Who else would like to jump in with a dream or anything? <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's cool. All right, so who's doing something awesome? There, that's the last word. I, we've talked a lot about different things, but anybody else want to do something else? Uh, my kids are going to create film trailers for oh, the yeah. novel. Oh, yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, What's so uh, we're taking the whole month, and, and one of our big projects is that they're going to create film trailers for Down These Mean Streets um, and have something like that video to publish actually online. Uh, so we're really juiced. Uh, so and they're, des describe that a little more. Let's so... Uh, so the novel they're reading, uh, set in Spanish Harlem, it's a memoir. The written assessment would be writing their own uh, memoir to become their personal statement uh, when they become seniors, but uh, they're doing group projects where they're creating. We have cameras and editing software because we're the architecture school, so uh, we have a way that uh, students can actually edit it, and so doing a lot of uh, showing film trailers, what's all the techniques involved, and then they're going to create their own. So. And then we're going to publish, and I don't know what's going to happen after that. I'm not sure. On my screen, you're sitting between two film experts, so i got to tell you. <laughs> so J Jim and Joel, you guys speak up. Have you messed with trailers at all? You know what? Um, 
not for a few years. I uh, <laughs> I did a, I did I did a trailer project or two with my. It's a great way. Like I, I had the one year that I did do trailers. The most recent one that I can remember, uh, which was just like two or three years ago. Um, they all my kids were reading independent novels, right? So I needed a way for them to kind of advertise. So they did that. They composed little, you know, thirty second to a minute uh, film trailers, kind of get their big idea across. In the coming to theaters, you know, that whole <laughs> the language of the film trailer. It was, it was cool. Cool. Does yours have? Does your project have a time limit or? I said I, I didn't want to watch something longer than an hour and a half, especially if it sucked. So wait, an hour um, and a half? I'm not, I mean, a minute and a half. Not oh, an I was hour. Say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. um, wow. But a lot of these the trailers things, longer than the film. <laughs> yeah, they, they they said we only have a minute and a half. I said, well, okay, that it's a long time. So um, yeah, their their sense of time is cool. is is funny. So let me let me um, say Google Apps again. I don't know if your kids are on that too in your district and what's open, what's not open. But I love that my kids are using YouTube, um, and 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 I have administrative control of YouTube because of Google Apps. So if they do something up on YouTube that's inappropriate or so slightly wrong, I can manage that. Um, so. But they have their own YouTube accounts that way, and I think it's kind of important. Of course, getting that open in different school districts is another dis issue <laughs> in different mm -hmm. schools. I know, but it's about time we got YouTube open, isn't it, folks? I agree. Anyway, I agree. <laughs> but and and I think that's one way to do it is to say, you know, all my kids have these accounts that I can administer um, and 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 can control, and so we need we need it open for that. But again, political statements. Um, we should uh, say um, good night soon here. But I want to leave it open just a couple more minutes. Other thoughts? Other other things you're dreaming of doing or, or doing that anybody would like to mention to make some connections here? You know, my kids. Uh, right. They're my digital writing workshop at class. It's a, it's a, it's thirteen kids, and they're a great class. They we see each other first thing in the morning, so they're still dreary eyed. And um, right, what our school has going on what right now. What time is that, is, by the way? Uh, we start at seven forty-three. Homeroom is done, and first period starts. <laughs> and um, so, anyways, we have at our schools doing this help coming initiative. Um, they got they gathered a bunch of kids who are active in the school, and they're like, "What do you guys want to do? You know, what's a way we can, you know, do something good, make a difference mm. in our community?" So the kids came up with this idea of help coming week, um, and it's like a cancer awareness week. So you know, all five days of the week, it's like uh, different cancer we focus on, blah, blah, blah. We raised money. We had a kid at our school who had leukemia. And, you know, a lot of our mm. kids are touched by, obviously, everybody is touched by, you know, by this disease. So, anywho, what my digital writing workshop class is doing, the 13 of them, we're teaming up. We're going to make a little documentary, like a five-minute movie. So, they're all, today, we kind of, like, divvied up roles. Uh, who's going to interview whom, who's going to go film this event, who's going to film up this event. And then next week we're going to sit down and see if we can cobble together a four to five minute uh, little movie kind of celebrating what we, what you know, what the school has done and what these kids have done. So let's see how that works. I'm not too sure how we're going to organize the editing, but we'll play with it and see what happens. Uh, you can't get away from film no matter what you do. <laughs> Uh, so th that definitely qualifies as awesome. Joe, do you want to keep talking a little bit and tell us uh, who our guest is next week as we move on here? Oh, yeah, sure. So next week um, we are continuing our investigation into connected learning. Um, and so Will Richardson is going to be joining us. Um, the Connected Learning Inquiry Group, what they did was uh, we read Why School, his e-book, <laughs> TED book. Um, and, Which is, uh, I don't think it's free, but it's very inexpensive on Amazon. Yeah, it's a, it's a dollar ninety nine. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so download it, it and get it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a great read, quick read. And I did it in in one day of SSR, three periods. So, and the SSR was <laughs> only like funny. twenty minutes. So I totally knocked that off like that. You know, I've said to myself, I never want a job that I can't read on. So anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, he really lays out like a lot of the problem. Like if you read his blog, he re he lays out a lot of the problems that um he sees in school, as well as the directions he thinks that that we all need to go. And I think it really it, a lot of the things he talks about conceptually really aligns well with connected learning. Um, so it's a good way to kind of like you know 
sit there and say uh, together, you know, what are some of the problems we see? What could be done about it? It was a good way to like narrow our focus and that. Great. So we'll be ta- we'll be talking with him next week. We'll see what he has to say. And the week oh, after that, it, I don't know what that matters. What? Say it again. I, th- I just uh, opened my mouth. He's very tall. I saw him in NCTE. He's walking. You with are Bud too, Hunt. but we can't tell on. Yeah, him. but he's even taller. He's like <laughs> six foot six. And I was so intimidated. I, I, he was walking with Bud Hunt. I was going to go and say hi. I was like, yeah, I'm a little bit too intimidated by his sheer and utter height. Come on. I'm 6'4", but he is way tall. And he has a ponytail, so that's like double intimidating. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, and just, to, just to mention, um, the week after, we're going to be working with um, some folks from P2PU who have uh, revamped their badging system, and so we want to look, it's a chance to look at badging. David Lois is coming back to talk about uh, a listening campaign the week after that, and then some media educators from Detroit are going to join us the week after that. So um, we've got lots of exciting stuff going on here at Teachers Teaching Teachers, which I uh, thank you all for uh, throwing in to this mix. Um, I hope we got to meet each other a little bit, and when you see... You know, Joe's kids online, you'll think, oh, yeah, that's Joe's kids. Or Jeremy's kids. Um, this, I believe, stories, um, you know, you might want to say, oh, those are cool. I want to do that, too. Anyway, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, Lauren, I hope the strikes end and uh, you can join us. And I love the idea of doing Hangouts some, sometime. And, uh, okay. Yeah. That sounds good. We should definitely pursue that. But you should be in school now, right? I mean, you're, except for the strikes? Yes. Okay, yes. so your summer vacation's over. Yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm working, but I'm not working. I mean, this is like my, my morning thing. Yes, I work as an English teacher in the mornings, and then I teach in company in the afternoons. But that is a completely different story. Uh, but the kids I want to see, to want to work with on this, I haven't met yet. Got it. Yeah. Well, that's that's where that's a good place to be. So that's great. Welcome. I hope you you keep joining us. Um, and want to say that uh, this, this uh, connection that we've been making um happens over edtechtalk.com, which is a uh, channel of the World Bridges Network, and we thank Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier for making all that happen. happen. Um, speaking to a biologist today who was talking about um, plants that they were trying to kill because they're not indigenous plants, she said that the problem is they kill the plants and then they use rhizomes rhizomes to, to regrow in other places. So I thought of Dave Cormier around that because he loves rhizomes and so forth. Anyway, it was the first time I've heard rhizomes mentioned in a real context. It wasn't a metaphor, and I was very happy. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for coming tonight. Okay, and, thank uh, you all. We'll, Thanks, we'll Paul. talk to you, thank you. you soon. Okay. Good night. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Nice talk, guys. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.